Washington, your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Nothing ever condemn my community because I love my community. And I, I'm going to still fight for my community. That man is praying for change in his city. Two of his sons were shot and killed just 13 months apart. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm McLeod Hageman. And I'm Jessica Coons. 24-year-old Arion McClellan died Sunday morning after he was shot in the head. His father shared his story at a vigil tonight in Decatur. WCI 3 Scarlett O'Hara spoke with the McClellan family in Scarlett. They want to use their grief to make a change. Losing two sons, Antoine McClellan Sr. says there's still hope for others. And that's the message he shared tonight, less than three days after his son was murdered. 13 months. He been, he's been gone. But man, just like every young man, he was trying to find his way. Last year, 26-year-old Antoine McClellan Jr. was shot and killed. Oh, he was my oldest son. Love that kid to death. Then, tragedy struck again. 24-year-old Arion McClellan died the same way as his brother. I miss him. I miss him so much. I miss Arion so much. Antoine McClellan Sr. is a deacon at City of Praise Church, so he gathered church officials, community leaders, and neighbors to pray for an end to gun violence at a vigil in honor of his children. I love my boys. I'm going to miss my boys, but at the same time, I want to help somebody save their son. He says his sons were in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it's his mission to prevent it from happening to others in Decatur. It's been hard to deal with just living in this town and seeing this happen to our youth. But McClellan says he won't give up on his city. They still have a chance. I mean, we can't throw the towel, we can't throw the towel up on Decatur because that's what's going on. While he works to save others in the midst of his own pain, a family friend wants to support them in return. Um, this is a very, very rare tragic event to lose two kids in 13 months. That's very rare. That's why he organized a fundraiser for the family. Between both McClellan brothers, six children were left behind. Even after you have the funeral and stuff, life still goes on, and there's still kids and families that still need some kind of support. McClellan preaches the same thing, that life still goes on. They had to see a positive thing out of bad situation. We can't keep seeing negative, negative, negative. McClellan says the only way to heal is to come together. He wants to inspire kids to follow the right path and encourage other men to be positive role models for them. Back to you. All right, Scarlett, thank you. Now, the family has organized a car and motorcycle show in honor of Antoine McClellan Jr. That'll happen at 3 p.m. on September 17th at Splash Cove Water Park in Decatur. We'll have the details on WCIA.com. We have an update for you tonight. A Champaign man has been sentenced to 30 years for two cases involving violence against women. Robert Perry pleaded guilty to aggravated criminal sexual assault. He raped a woman while armed with a knife at a Champaign apartment complex last January. He got away from police then, but five months later, a DNA test matched Perry and a warrant was issued. Perry was then arrested in June 2021 after police responded to Country Brook Apartments for a domestic dispute and learned he was wanted. He barricaded himself for several hours until police were able to arrest him. Perry will have to register as a sex offender. His other charges were dismissed in exchange for his plea. A U of I professor has been arrested for sedition after appearing on a Pakistani TV station. Shabazz Gill is a well-known politician in Pakistan and also works with the Geese College of Business. On air in Pakistan, he encouraged troops to revolt against illegal order from top military leadership. If found guilty, he could face the death penalty. University officials confirmed Gill was not teaching classes last semester and was not scheduled to teach this semester. We've asked for a comment from the university and are waiting for a response. The family of fallen Champaign police officer Christopher Oberheim was presented with the Lee Benzel Law Enforcement Officer Award. Now, officer Oberheim was shot and killed in the line of duty after responding to a domestic disturbance on the city's north side. Special Agent Benzel was a decorated state trooper for 19 years and served in Vietnam. Piatt County VFW presented Amber Oberheim and her family with that award. It's given to a deserving law enforcement officer who lives or works in the area and whose efforts go beyond the regular call of duty. And the Champaign Police Department welcomes five new officers. They graduated from the police academy and are now undergoing field training. Department leaders say they're looking forward to bringing in even more. The city of Champaign has named a new public works director after a two-year vacancy. 
Khalil Zaid will serve as the new Public Works Director. He spent a majority of his career in Baltimore, where he's had a majority of roles, including leading the departments of Public Works. Now he's replacing Dennis Schmidt, who retired in 2020. Zaid is starting in October. We have some new information for you tonight. Iroquois County board members are asking for accountability amidst an investigation into the public health director. We told you last month state police are investigating D. Shippert. Board members say it's in connection to overtime pay. WCI 3's Marley Capper went to Watsika today and Marley law enforcement was at the health department's building today. That's right. We actually received a tip that there were several state police officers at the department. I called an Iroquois County board member who happened to be at the same building at the same time. While he isn't sure why they were there, he assumes it's about the investigation. Chad McGinnon says there is very little the board actually knows since the investigation is being handled by state police, but he was able to get some details on what's been happening. McGinnon says board members got complaints about Shippert from her employees. He says they claimed she was mistreating them, she would gamble during the workday, or simply just not show up for work. But he says the biggest concern is overtime pay. He says more than $100,000 worth of overtime was paid out to her over two years. I FOIA'd uh, some Board of Health documents. I haven't gone through all of them yet. There's a lot. Just trying to find out how much overtime we paid. Uh, was it authorized? You know, just I have my own concerns as a representative to make sure that the citizens' tax money is being spent properly. McGinnis does recognize that COVID put a lot of stress on our public health administrators and believes they do deserve to be paid for any overtime done. He just wants accountability to find out who authorized the pay and if it was all documented properly. Not only did I reach out to Shippert, who did not answer, but the Iroquois County Board Chairman, who declined to comment. I reached out to the state police to find out why they were at the health department today. They said they would get back to me. Reporting live in the newsroom, Marley Capper, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Marley, thank you. We have a follow up from six. Champaign City Council is moving forward with plans for a year round homeless shelter. Tonight, council members voted to spend $3.9 million on a low barrier shelter. That money comes from the American Rescue Plan Act. The city will be leasing the old Habitat for Humanity resale store on University Avenue for two years. It'll have room for 50 men and 10 women. The shelter will not exclude people who struggle with substance abuse and will provide help to those who need it. When the city was going through the public input process for allocation of the American Rescue Plan Act funds, um, this was one of the top three items that received support from the community. So I know that, that this is a high priority to, to the community. The shelter is scheduled to open November 1st. The council also approved allocating an additional $200,000 for rental assistance. It's been more than a year since one school district needed to tear down their old gymnasium, but tonight they're pretty excited about opening the doors to this brand new one. It's just in time for the beginning of the school year. Argenta Oriana's Kimler Gymnasium was demolished in 2020 after school officials noticed a few issues, but they got right to work. The principal says there's been a few delays because of material and labor shortages, but he's proud of that facility, including the new features it has to offer. The old gym had permanent wooden bleachers that were in place. It gave it a lot of character, but it was very limiting on the space and usage of that space. So now we've got retractable bleachers that we can push back and have two full courts for volleyball and basketball. Uh, we've added video board. They also installed the touchscreen digital yearbook in the lobby. He says they're still putting on some of the finishing touches, but students are already excited about practicing in that new space. A Champaign firefighter was back to work today following a near-death experience. He was having a heart attack and didn't even realize it. And doctors caught it just in time. WCI 3's Ariana Williams has more. You get very scared really quick. And I've done a lot of things, obviously, here at the fire department. I don't think anything scared me that bad. A block artery was the last thing Battalion Chief John Hawking expected when he went in to get some medication for mild chest pains. The visit ended with him being airlifted to Springfield. I called my wife, and I was like, don't worry about it. It's indigestion. Just, you don't need to come to some drunk. I don't know what, but you need to come. And that something was a 99% blockage in the main artery. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the U.S. Regular screenings might normally work, but with firefighters, risk factors are a bit harder to identify. It's very strenuous being a firefighter, and so as a result of that, we're more susceptible to heart disease 
and uh, we're not the best patients in the world, and sometimes we ignore the symptoms. Hawking is thankful he didn't ignore those symptoms. It doesn't have to be all those classic signs of a heart attack. You know, I know the, the pressure, the radiating pain, um, diaphoretic, getting dizzy. That didn't happen with me. It, it just didn't. Battalion Chief Hawking is now happily back to work. Thanks to cardiac therapy and a lifestyle change, he says he feels at his best. I kind of picked up where I left off. I, I, it's weird to say, but today I don't feel like I had a heart attack. The fire department's health motto is if you don't feel well, don't make it your farewell. In Champaign, Ariana Williams with WCIA 3, your local news leader. The Champaign Fire Department conducts annual physicals on its crews, and firefighters over a certain age also go through a stress test every year. Some diehard Illini fans were up close and personal to some of their favorite athletes, which team showed up for an annual outing. Also tonight, another hot air balloon festival is coming to central Illinois, and it's all for a good cause. All right, Kevin, more of the same in the weather department. Well, I'll say this. If you want rain, plan a hot air balloon festival. Oh. And it'll come. It'll get rain. <laughs> Hopefully <Thanks>. not. Well, <laughs> talk to anybody that's ever gone to Danville, Vermillion <laughs> County, the one they've had for many years, and uh, we will let you know about that. All right, uh, 82 the high today, running below average. When we come back, we'll talk more about actual rain in the forecast for the weekend.